Now, the classic, or you might say the standard, for addressing all situations like what's been going on, say, in the news for the last two or three weeks, particularly with the so-called uprisings and all like that, there's a standard codified saying for that. Uh, and it would apply not just to so-called Middle East situations, it will apply anywhere at any time where people who shouldn't be harmed are being harmed. That's any people who shouldn't be harmed. Some people should be harmed. But the people who shouldn't be harmed are being harmed if they're classified as non-white and shouldn't be harmed. I mean, they're not doing anything except just they just happen to be where they are. And all it takes is one. And that kicks in the codified position on the entire area. If just one person who shouldn't be harmed is harmed, and that person is classified as non-white, that automatically kicks it into the suspicion of the white supremacists being at work. All it takes is just one person, one person out of million, out of millions. If one person just falls off a bicycle and hits their head while some shelling is going on, and that person is officially classified as a non-white person. That means that the white supremacists are to be blamed for everything going on in the entire area of harm coming to someone who should not have been harmed. So it goes according to these four things. Many people have been harmed who should not have been harmed. That's number one. Number two, many people are to blame. Number three, the people who are most to blame are hiding in plain sight. Meaning they may, most of them, most of them will be nowhere near what we call the Middle East physically. But they'll be orchestrating everything by remote control. Thousands of miles away sometimes. Sometimes far, sometimes near. Sometimes somewhere in between but they are the people who are most to blame. The people who are most to blame are hiding in plain sight. Just people who are just kind of walking around, uh, and if you talk to them about Middle East, some of them being so deceptive like they are, they're experts at that, will say, Middle East, exactly, what is that? Or is that somewhere around Arabia or someplace like that? I mean, that's the way they will talk in just what you might call coffee table conversation. But some of these people are masters at manipulating everything that's going on in the place that you are talking about and trying to get them to understand, and they know everything about it. That's what I mean by hiding in plain sight. There's someone standing around a coffee machine, and they would give the impression that they wouldn't know where the Middle East is supposed to be. They were probably named New Hampshire when talking to someone because they know how to act. They're great actors and actresses. That's some of them. And then some of them, of course, call themselves experts and they give out all kinds of false information. And they are experts. That's why they can give false information. Because to be an excellent non-truth teller, you have to know what the truth is. But let's get back to the fourth one. Well, I'll, I'll reiterate, the, uh, repeat the third one. The people who are most to blame are hiding in plain sight. In other words, they're not somewhere in some cave somewhere and all like that. They might go in some underground something or another, I mean, you know, to, to fire some mysterious weapon or spread some kind of disease or something like that. Because they have these places, too. The white supremacists operate everywhere, all over the world, all the time, 24-7. And then the fourth one is, the people who are most to blame are all white supremacists. And you have just four things to say, and it will apply to a number of situations. Many people have been harmed who should not be harmed, number one. Number two. Many people are to blame. Number three, the people who are most to blame are hiding in plain sight. Number four, the people who are most to blame are all 
white supremacists. 